What's up, party people? Woo! <laughs> yeah, what's up, party people? Such a reaction, guys. <laughs> what is up? What what's is going on? on? Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, my name is Jaira, and I'm with my co-host, Ethan. Ethan, and today we have Rhea with us. Hi, yes. guys. <laughs> We're clapping. <laughs> clapping. Um, we need to make some like you guys need to make some like sound effect for like oh, clapping yeah. and oh, yeah. it's like the sound people boards. cheering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that possible? Yeah. So oh, when someone says "What's board. up?" Yeah. When someone says yeah, "What's yeah. up, people?" Then just press. Yeah. Ma -ma -ma -ma. Dang, she got all the ideas. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we need that. <laughs> I think yeah. I think we need you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We need Thanks your help. Guys. Yeah. Mentor, I'm always please. one message away. Yeah. So, oh man, like where we gonna we're gonna dig into this? How about we start with? Um, yeah, who are you? Who are you? Ria? Yeah, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, hi guys, I'm Ria. I am a photographer um, for a decade now. I'm wow. quite old. A decade. Um, but uh, maybe I should sit here so I can also like talk oh, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, I started at a young age, maybe like 16, and I. Luckily, won a competition in Perth, which is kind of like a Perth uh, collective, actually. It's just like a landscape competition, and that's kind of the start of my photography career. Mm. Um, from there, I branched into travel photography, mm. and through traveling in like um, Bali, especially, like I got into the fashion industry. Mm. Um, so just like everyone else, my work kind of suffered when the pandemic hit, right, and yeah. I was kind of like forced to I guess reevaluate my priorities and kind of find like new ways to like make income and also like stay t as a creative still. Yeah. So my photography career branched out into a photography slash marketing agency. Oh. So basically I do like social media management, yeah. product photography and um, I guess not really graphic design but we can kind of branch that out yeah. like with some, like yep. we can like outsource that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just a creative industry for the last, yeah, I guess 10 years. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but I do um, casual work at Portside Willerton. Just a shout out to <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait where's this Port place? Portside, Portside Willerton, What's like Portside? the climb, the bouldering the gym. Oh, the, the new place. Yeah. Oh, no yeah. way. So I've been climbing at Old Connor for a while yeah. and then they had a position to open up and I've been really slack with my fitness lately. So <laughs> I was just like, I'm sure if I worked there even a couple of shifts a week, I'd be forced to climb. That's mm. pretty so awesome. Yeah. So have you been forced to climb? Me. I always get a free friend each month. So. Oh. That's Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I really have dope. been thinking about going bouldering. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. It's it's it would even if you're like physically fit, I feel like it would yeah, take its toll on you in the sure. first but then you would like it. Mm. Especially if you like solving puzzles and oh, yeah, figuring right. things out. It's just all about getting to the top. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Fair enough. How long have you been doing that for? Um, I've been doing it for four years, but I've actually been a bit slack with it. So, like, like casual? Yeah, like, yeah. the guys that I started with, they're climbing, like, you know, like, they're competing for, like, the state competitions oh, wow. and okay, things yeah. like that, but I'm just kind of, like... Just chill. Yeah, casually, it's a little... Yeah. It's, I guess it's kind of like working out. If you work out four times a week, then you get pretty strong quite easily, mm -hmm. but if you take a break, then it's a bit harder to yeah, yeah. regain your muscles and... Lose all the weight. Oh, for so sure. Yeah. Mm. Well, okay. We were talking about before about your business. Creative, and like you yeah. Have, you have some interns under you and stuff mm. like that. But how long have you been doing that by yourself? Um, Two years. Two years by yeah. yourself. Yeah. Mm. Wow. But before, I was just would take only like one client and would do like 20 hours. Yeah. Um, but then I realized that, you know, just like any other business, there are things that I like to do more. So I like to do the photography side. Um, I don't like to do all the emails and a lot mm -hmm. of the other yeah, things. Yeah, of course. Yep. So then I was like, how can I make it a bit more, um, you know, like sustainable? Like if I approach a client and I say, I just want to do photography, that would just only be like 10 hours a week like mm. maybe like once a month mm -hmm. yeah. so i was like oh maybe i could still offer the same package but then i have people that are like you know like would do the other things and you know like i can't be like the best at everything so for me i find it better to outsource the things that i can't do mm. rather than spend 40 hours mastering yeah. something that someone did three years mm, studying at true. uni yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure for yeah sure. yeah yeah okay. what, what did you study at uni um, so actually at uni, I did anthropology, sociology, and creative writing. I, I went Whoa. through a whole thing. I did wow. engineering. I did marketing. Wait, you did engineering? Yeah. Well. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. But I didn't finish my engineering because, um, I don't know, I guess I've always been a huge nerd when I was young. 
um, and I thought that you know, like I'd follow the traditional mm -hmm. path where yeah. you become a doctor or you become an engineer. Yep. And it wasn't a big issue when I, you know, like I feel like 16 is such a young age to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. For sure. Like yeah. To go yeah. to uni. That's where he's at. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but the thing is. From where I'm from, I feel like it's okay to change your mind. And mm. I wouldn't have changed it for anything. Like, you know, like some people would be like, oh, you know, you wasted two, three years doing engineering. Like yeah. only one more year and you'd be a graduate. But then mm. I met the most amazing people during my engineering degree. And yeah. even though I don't, I'm not in the same industry as them, we're still friends. So, mm. you know, like I wouldn't change that for anything. Mm. And I think um, because of that, I'm a bit more, uh, I'm more appreciative of, you know, like what I'm doing now. So um, I ended up doing anthropology and creative writing at uni. Like, I've always loved writing ever since I was little. But I guess because English is my second language, initially I never thought that I'd be good enough to be mm. a writer. Right, yep. yeah. Which is quite interesting because I don't know about you guys, but I find that in here, like, majority of the ones that are very critiquing with grammar are usually... Asians as well. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like yeah. I've had friends in creative writing and they can write well, but sometimes their spelling would be wrong and no one would give a fuck. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, anthropology is, I think it comes from also me um, being born in the Philippines and mm. then growing up here. So I I feel like I've always had one foot in another culture mm, and yeah. one foot in yeah, another yeah. culture, which I feel like you guys could probably also resonate with. Yeah. So I thought that I'd do that because it's kind of like a study of cultures. So it kind of helps you understand um, where people are coming from, like mm. studying different subcultures like the zombie group. Yeah, right. And, you yeah. know, how they're in track with everything around them. So I find that that was quite, like, interesting for me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So ideally, my job, my ideal job would be National Geographic, where it's my anthropology, oh, yeah, photography, that'd, that'd and writing. That would be pretty writing. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dang. But, yeah. Is that who a knows? dream? That, that was a dream. <laughs> that was kind of like what you were doing before the pandemic, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it was just more like, um, I think that's a struggle as well because, you know, like the reality of it is sometimes we just have to take jobs that would mm. give us money. Yeah. Mm. And, yeah. Sometimes that's just the fashion industry. That's just the easy, like, photography job. Like, mm. like, because who would pay you to go to, like, a tribe in, you know, like, yeah, that's true. Southeast Asia or something? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a little yeah. bit, like, I mean, there would, obviously, National Geographic or some other, like, travel magazines would, but yeah. it's very competitive and, mm. but, you know, never give up and just yeah. keep. Mm. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I like that. That's just cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I don't know if I would ever, you know, you know, get myself out there to go to one of those native tribes and stuff like that and take mm. photos. But I think that's pretty awesome because uh, National Geographic is pretty dope. It yeah. is pretty dope. And I used to watch that as And a you kid. probably would work with, what, David Attenborough, right? Like, oh, is that possible? That would be the like, dream. He's, all, like, really old now, man. Hey, man, he's still got the I voice. I think he could still, like, narrate from, I like... I think he could. Yeah. <laughs> from, his, from his bed. <laughs> from, from his bed. I mean, that's why we have Zoom now and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, so, totally, yeah, totally. So. That's cool. Okay. Are you guys huge travelers yourself? Or? I... I mean, I, I do have the travel bug, but mm -hmm. I haven't traveled a lot in a sense. Yeah, but I, I really either. want to. And like, yeah. it sucks that it came out of just being locked down in Perth this mm -hmm. whole time. Mm. But I really like, as soon as we can like go, I'm going to go. Well, if I can. Well, the borders are open. I, I know, tomorrow, basically. Yeah. yeah um, uh, we'll keep it small. We'll probably interstate first. I think, I mean, hopefully we can go to Melbourne this, yeah. this year. Yeah. You think about um, it. Um, But yeah, maybe more international stuff yeah later fresh on. good peeps in melbourne that's right <laughs> any podcasters there let us know if you're watching hey we're gonna be there oh, i completely forgot there's a camera there yeah. like, <laughs> You've been sorry like, guys yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay that's okay that's all yeah it's all good um yeah did you like kind of like how did you start off with like all that photography stuff you know what i mean like how did you like kind of know like oh this that photography like, is for me yeah i guess so i'll just like kind of like oh i want to start this as like kind of a business yeah, mm. so I think um, I obviously I started with like the film cameras when I was like really mm. young, just kind yeah. of using it whenever there's a party. My parents' film cameras, and then I remember I think I was in year three when my 
dad first got the phone with a camera oh and my. I was yeah. absolutely like obsessed with it yeah, you know like, I was yeah. just taking photos of like mushrooms in the backyard and <laughs> <laughs> but obviously yeah. it didn't really click into me until I was like a little bit older that oh this is actually something that I quite enjoy like yeah. I like capturing moments and then I look mm. back on it and I go like oh I remember like you know like it's not just like a photo that that's what everyone always thinks you know yeah, it's like yeah. a photo we have it in our phone like but then I was like no because when you look at it it reminded you, it reminds you of that day like mm. it reminds you of who you're with it reminds you of what you were doing that day mm, yeah. um and then i remember for my i think it was like my 18th birthday i specifically asked for a um dslr Ooh. which is you know like it's not really like a cheap camera yeah they <laughs> and then um when i was in high school i think i was working um like for hungry jacks like overnight like and mm. i was just like working so i could buy my laptop and i could buy my dslr but it's just like it's so hard when you're only working like two yeah, days a week yeah, on top of like really school yep. so i remember i think it was the day of my birthday and i was 18 and then my dad woke me up and then um he's like oh happy birthday um we're getting your camera today and i was just like <gasps> that is over really the moon yeah. like I, I couldn't believe it i thought i was just like you know like yeah. dreaming or something and then yeah when i got my camera i guess i was just shooting non-stop Mm. I never really saw it as sort of like a viable income in mm. the first like maybe yeah. like even five years that just I was shooting. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely yeah. just a hobby. And then um, uh, I was doing quite a lot of landscape because I I traveled a lot. Like I'd go on a Europe backpacking tour, um, mm. Southeast Asia. And then um, suddenly I had people like messaging me on Instagram asking to buy my prints. And I was like, oh okay like you know like i've never intended to sell it i don't really know mm, yeah. like how to do it etc cetera, etc cetera. um and then it kind of like i didn't even have like a proper print store yeah like yeah. it was just like i would just actually go to um fitzgerald in north perth print yeah, it and then mail it you know like yeah, yeah. unlike proper print store where they order it online pay it online and yeah. then yeah. so i was just like doing that just like an extra income and mm. then um for some reason, I started getting hired for birthday parties. And I was like, oh, it's something I've never done before. Mm, Might yeah. as well do it. Um, and then I got into the music industry. So I was shooting mm. a lot of gigs mm. for Isolated Nation. Um, so basically, they actually started from uni as well. Like just kind of like a little project between yeah, two yeah. people. And then basically, they review upcoming music um, events in Perth. So they get free passes. Um, you send like a review and a photographer. And I was freelancing for them as a photographer. Oh, wow. And yeah, like from then I was just like, this is actually something that I could do mm, like yeah, my whole life. Yeah, just yeah. shoot people, like yeah. capture <laughs> moments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> shoot, shoot people. people. Yeah, there yeah. was this meme that was like, um, tell people what you do um, without actually telling what you do. Mm, and one yeah. of my friends was a photographer was like, I shoot people and I take their money. <laughs> <I was like> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. It is true though. Yeah, that's cool. Um, oh, that's awesome. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I think for me, having, um, yeah, English is my second language. If I can't express myself in English when I was younger, like I would mm. use photos to like do that. Wow. Yeah. That's, tr that's, that's powerful. <laughs> that's great, crazy. That, that yeah. sounded a bit dramatic than I wanted it to be. No, <laughs> but I, f I feel, were you, because um, I guess for me, I recently also started taking pictures for Bowl. Like, mm -hmm. a couple of people kind of asked me, and I was very nervous. Were you guys kind of nervous when, like, they asked you for birthday parties and gigs and everything? Yeah. Did you ever feel like you weren't, like, good enough. prepared? Yeah, I guess Yeah, so. definitely in the beginning, especially if it's, like, something that I haven't really done quite mm. a lot before. Mm -hmm. So, like, this year, I have a couple of weddings. Oh, But yep. I've only ever done maybe, like, three weddings in my mm. 10 years of a photography career. But these weddings are just, like, f like friends or people that I've known through uni that insisted that i must take their wedding photos mm. and i was like oh you know like i'm a bit scared yeah, but um, scary, they yeah. were like oh um you know like you just but we want you like we want how you take the photos and we think you'll be the best and i'd be like i don't know bro yeah. but <laughs> i think to yeah. be honest just like i usually just fake it till i make it <laughs> and then once yep, you're there like you as long as you stay i guess genuine to mm. what you are there to do yeah like when it's birthday you know like i'm there to capture the child's first birthday mm. so like their first yeah. milestones and things like that first photo with the family um it just magically falls into place that's true wow. it's true yeah like i took the second shoot and i guess i got like 
I don't know, like, I was just looking through other photos and you get, you just get these, like, really good gems of photos where it's, like, perfectly framed and everything. Yeah. I just don't know how it happens, you know what I mean? You're just taking photos. Yeah. That's what just happens. I I guess we're also, like, our self's biggest critic, you know? Yeah, like, Mm -hmm. Like, there's always better photographers than me mm. so um, yeah. I think that also kind of plays into the factor of be like maybe I'm not good enough but mm. at the end of the day you just kind of wing it yeah yeah <laughs> just wing it just do yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. Just do it mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true so uh, I'm not very much of a photographer <laughs> yeah so I'll send the odd one out here <laughs> yep but like I'm trying to get into this stuff mm-hmm. right but my sense for photos is just not great. Like, I showed Ethan this photo one time, I remember. I was like, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. And he's like, no, don't post that. <laughs> so, like, what advice would you give to someone that is, like, the equivalent of someone that just can't sing, someone that's tone deaf? But um, what sort of photos are you taking? Oh, just like, anything. general? Just anything, really. Just, like, like, a normal citizen just taking pictures, yeah, like just a tourist. Content. Yeah, just, like, a picture of food. I'm just trying to help him take content <laughs> as well, you know? Basically, <laughs> even my pictures of food are not good. Like yeah, so you're just giving him pretty much a gist of how to take better photos than what you're Yeah, because I take a photo of this, this dish, it looks awesome, right? But then when I take the picture and you look at it, you don't want to eat it because, like, <laughs> my, my, my skills are just not that good. <laughs> right? Like... Yeah, it's just so not that bad, but yeah. <laughs> I, I've always, I've always told. Uh, first of all, I do have a um, iPhone photography tips PDF that I'll send oh. you. <laughs> wow. <that's laughs> <what? laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. See. Um, you gotta ask. You never know. You might. You might. You, might. you shall receive. <laughs> yeah. You never know. <laughs> um, but I think um, the way I go about taking photos is for me is always about telling a story. Mm. You know, like mm. some sometimes, like for example, people see a couple and they just see like a couple. But then even when I shot Nick and um, Yuan, yeah, uh, yeah, yep. sorry, um, <laughs> that's okay. No, that's, that's I basically pretty good. had to <laughs> ask, you know, like yeah. how they met, mm, like yeah. you know what they really like about each other. Right. So, yeah. um, can you tell us what they said? No, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. No, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. For another time. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, like it. That's kind of what um, makes it special. Like, for example, if I knew that they were friends before they started dating together, then mm. I can tell them their body language would be a little bit different yeah. than usually when people just mm. dated straight away. They're a little bit more touchy. But because they've been friends before, yeah. it was just like, you know, just like bros hanging out. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah. when I take the wow. photos, it's all about the story because I want it to be natural. I'm not yeah. going to force mm. them to like kiss in front of the camera. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just yeah, more like yeah. a natural. And the same, if it's like a food um, photography, you know, like um, if it's like a colorful dish, then colors are important. So you wanted to make sure your lighting is good. Yeah. No, like unnecessary shadows. Um, you wanted to make sure like, you can see all the details. Like if sure. there's like big pieces on it, mm. then you want it to highlight that. Mm. It's all about just, it's not just like your eye that's like looking at it. It's all like your senses and mm. like that goes into taking yeah. them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So mm. yeah. Have you ever made a couple like kiss? Have you asked them like, oh, do you guys not, want Not kiss? on purpose. Like I think I would have to in the we- in, like wedding phot- yeah. photography, oh, of yeah, course. Like but I find that um, majority of, most of my best shoots are just when they're just being themselves, mm. you know? Like, sometimes they would just look at each other and they just feel like kissing. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever feel uncomfortable? Like, well, if they go to ham. Like, they're just going at it. Well, you know I, what I mean? Oh, I guess I've never had that. Oh, you haven't had that? Because like, they, they know. In, like, I feel like with <laughs> they me... They wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> why would you? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, 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 you never know, man. Yeah. 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 Um... I think with me, like, I just... Oh, actually, now that you mentioned, I did remember... Because um, we did a music video once. Okay. We shot a music video. And I was supposed to shoot for the cover, like, the album cover of the music. Yeah. Um, and I had to ask them to kiss. Mm. So they were kissing, but then um, it was quite uh, dark. And then I guess the my shutter speed was pretty slow mm. and it wasn't capturing it. So I just had to ask them to, like, keep, keep kissing. Keep kissing. Yeah. Going. But they kind of made it a little bit natural. It was a bit of a romantic setting because it was mm. like a um, photo exhibit that I organized and there's like live music playing in the background yeah. and people are just mingling and they're just kind of minding their own thing in the yeah, middle. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it, it turned out quite cute. Okay, yeah. it turned out okay. Um, <laughs> were they a couple? Or they just yeah, they were a couple. Oh, oh no, that, that's God. a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Although I do want to, I've always wanted to, um, to shoot two people that are, like kind of like an experiment. Right. So I Ooh. actually like started this. 
Awesome. Yeah, yeah I actually pong. started okay. this. Um, maybe if I do proceed with it, you guys can interview them before and after. Oh, actually, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. Yeah, so, cool. so I have this, um, I guess, um, project in mind, like kind of just like a passion project of having two people um, meet up and for the first time, and then I take a photo of them. And then uh, we meet up again maybe like in a week and then I take a photo of them and then maybe like after six weeks I take a photo of them as well and you can kind of want to see how the body language kind mm. of changes. changes. Yeah. Ooh, so okay. I started it with um, two of my friends um, but um, I guess it was just like when the restrictions were like being implemented mm. so it was a little yeah. bit hard to hard, follow yeah. through with it. Yeah. But basically on the first photo they were literally sitting here and then there right oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. like they were like, like so oh, far away from each other yeah. and then on the, like the fourth photo they were like they were literally like chumming up and like the guy's hand was like around oh, her oh. like they weren't like dating or anything <laughs> oh, but, but they have caught up like for coffee a couple of times yeah. and it wasn't intended to be like a matchmaking thing like you know it could be like two guys just like getting to know each other yeah. Two yeah. Bros, but yep. it's yeah. quite interesting but I I feel like if I do that again I would have wanted it to be like um, like inter- I wouldn't want mm. I would want them to be interviewed like you know like us how did you feel like yeah wow that would that's be interesting that's yeah. very interesting I, yeah. I'm yeah, that's cool because I'm like a that. I'm a big fan of like you know those BuzzFeed videos where they're like <laughs> yeah. they're like like blind dates kind of thing <laughs> or like the yeah. Jubilee videos and yeah, all that. yeah so yeah. like yeah. there was one where like pretty much there's like a contestant a girl let's say and they only can see like the feet first oh yeah and yeah, then yeah, they'll eliminate that. Have you seen that? so like. There'll be like a girl and then there'll be like a curtain. And the yeah, curtain will only yeah, show the feet yeah, first. Yeah. Then she'll eliminate then a guy. Yeah. And then it'll start going up and up yeah, and then yeah. finally meet the I guy. I saw one that this girl decided who to date based on the Vietnamese food that they're making. Wow. See, that, that I'm really interested in just like how people just like kind of choose like just different people as well. You we could do something like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like maybe future project that would be pretty dope. But, but yeah, that's... I mean, what you're doing sounds great. Oh, thank yeah, you. It thank amazing. you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But yeah, like, like, do you find that like couples are the most, like, I don't know, you can get a story kind of from them or do you, mm. is it a bit harder to get it just like, let's say just Jar just sitting there, I guess, just trying to get oh, a story out of him? No, definitely not hard at all. I think it's easy to just, you know, like, even like I said, like if I take portraits of you like on the street, like I can tell that you would have danced based on how you mm. put your body weight on your yeah. like one leg or something. Mm. So even that, there's already like a story with that, you know. Yeah. Like he used to be a dancer, or he used to do this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think it's al- always just about connecting with who you're shooting with. So I suppose that's also why I kind of find it hard to um stay in the fashion industry because, um. When you do like big brands and when it's like a full day of photo shoot, sometimes mm. you just meet your model like straight on the spot. Yeah. Whereas I like to have like, a little bit of coffee first, you know, like talk to each other. Get to know them, yeah. Yeah, mm. like, you know, what do you want to get out of this photo shoot? Mm. Yeah. Like what is it, what it's in it for you? Like, yeah. But um, yeah, so definitely easier with couples because there's already that story of how they met. Right. And mm. I feel yeah, like out yeah, of, it true. sounds so cliche, but I feel like, Love is the easiest thing to translate into photos. Damn. Mm. You know? That's pretty good. And to words. Even though <laughs> I feel like there's not enough words to describe it. But yeah. No, I get that. That's Wow. That's yeah. facts. <laughs> but I do, I, do, I do know that when you're communicating with a person, and I've been learning this as well, body language is actually more than the words. Yeah. Like totally. how you yeah. and tone comes into play when it mm. comes into yeah. the percentages. But body language is like almost more than half possibly. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure there's study somewhere, but I do yeah. know that. I mean, you would feel it subconsciously as well. Like, yeah. you're like oh, this person's not feeling my vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I always like to um, watch like some crime you know, like oh yeah, yeah. documentaries, yeah. and it's all about how they present themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, if they're doing yeah. that on a the table, then they're being honest and open because yeah. they're like exposing themselves, yeah. but when they're like a little bit more, un- the, yeah, yeah, then so it's quite, it's definitely interesting. Mm. Like, I feel like if I didn't do anthropology, maybe psychology or yeah. something mm, kind of similar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. There, there's some good books um, on that actually. Ooh. Like, like an FBI agent, like um, talking about body language and stuff like that. Oh, I forgot the name. But I'll let you know the book. <laughs> no worries. Too bad that these guys won't know, but <laughs> I'll let you know I'll, um, behind the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because this is my 
my phone library. Anyways, but yeah, uh, you talked about some exhibitions you did uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. So you organized those things and like. Mm. Yeah. So I did. Um, it's called Ugnayan. I did it maybe like two years ago, and basically it's um, uh, Ugnayan is a Tagalog word, which is um, I guess like a tribute to my Filipino heritage, and it oh, means okay. connection. Ooh. So mm. I guess it kind of stemmed from being the pandemic and how. Um, at the end of the pandemic, oh, kind of like, I guess, after the whole restrictions have passed, mm. um, we all have like a different, we've all redefined what connection is, you know, like how important it is. Like some people have developed their relationship with themselves. Some mm. people have developed their relationships with nature, with going on walks. Yeah. Mm. Some people have developed their relationships with their partner because they're isolating together yeah. or things like that um, with their families. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. So with the exhibit, I had five photographers kind of um, showcase photos of how have they redefined um, connections. Yep. So yeah, some have taken photos of themselves because they've developed their relationship with themselves. Mm. Some have taken photos of her friend um, painting. I think she have kind of like rekindled her love for, pa for painting. Oh, that's some cool. are like hiking, you know, like yep. some are couples. Yeah. And then um, there's like some live music and pretty much like it's just like everyone can come but I've yeah. of, i think majority of the people that came are in the creative industry so it just became a mingle night networking or yeah or and from there cool, like yeah. i just noticed all these people on instagram they're like doing collaborations together mm. from the mm. event and i was like oh my god That's that is awesome. so cute <laughs> and then um propel youth arts which is also like a youth organization in perth um they do like a lot of um, opportunities for young people like 13 to 26 whether it be like photography music you know like things like that they hired me the year after to organize another one and there's like some live poetry and oh, wow. music and then it kind of just like really reminded me of how much I love getting people together. Mm. So I'm, we're actually organizing another one this year. Mm. Oh, nice. Around May, June, depending on... I'm kind okay. of waiting when the borders open because mm. I just kind yeah. of want to see what the restrictions this would be like. Be, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I'll let you guys know. Yeah, that'd be um, awesome. I would wanna, yeah. I definitely would want to Maybe you can even do like a live interview of like people would be like, wow. oh, so what... Wow. That is a great <laughs> idea. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's pretty just, like, cool. The other you need to be on your more. You need to be on your more. <laughs> <laughs> gosh. We'll have a chat after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we definitely would be down to do something like that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely. Um, in, I feel like yeah, it's it's quite important. Like you know, like having the community behind you. Yeah, yeah. especially in these uncertain times. That yeah, is really for sure. Dope. What's what's the biggest um thing that the pandemic has taught you guys? Yeah, so Ria, who's been wearing this red coat this entire time, um, <laughs> <laughs> to, to answer your looks question, great, looks great. Uh, actually, for me, I I, re I really resonate with what you said about people find themselves through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, I think in, in my time in isolation, I felt like I have learned more about myself, actually. Because, a funny story, really quickly, I, I, mention, uh, <laughs> I mention this like all the time, but, uh, so, do you know subtle Asian dating? Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> Oh, I know subtle Asian traits, but okay. not the dating one. Oh, you don't know that one? Okay, so it's pretty much another like branch bran off yeah. on that. Uh, how it started is a whole nother story. But um, yeah, I, so I met someone through that and I was talking to this person. Ooh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> and we kind of had a thing going no, on. No, getting to the good part. <laughs> yeah, and I was talking to her like here and there. Um, and we were actually like face calling like almost every night at one wow. point. Wow. Yeah. First call was eight hours. Wow. Yeah, I know. I like to mention that. <laughs> um, but yeah, but, but through that, it was pretty cool because I started to, you know, I learned like what I, what I'm looking for and what mm. I need and like who I am in like as a person in these situations mm. and like how I handle si situations. I found out that yeah. um, I'm someone that runs away from conflict a lot and this whole thing helped me realize that. And now I try to like tackle it head on, mm. you know. That's great. So yeah, that's that's for me. I don't take too much time. Uh, Ethan, what about you? That's amazing. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. yeah. I guess like, I guess I just kind of realized how much like the physical touch aspect of just like relationships um, yep. matter. Yep. Cause yep. like, yeah, me and my mates can just like play games and everything, but mm. like there will always just be like you know a little rough touching and everything. And I feel like I actually devalue that. You know what I mean? For sure. Like I think that's a huge part in just relationships. But is that your love language as well? It's one of my like top three. Okay, yeah. So What's I think what do you reckon is your number one? My number one is quality time. I'm pretty sure. So it's also hard with the pandemic. <laughs> it was a bit hard, yeah. And I feel like you can't be like, hey, let's. Ha I feel like FaceTiming for me is a bit hard. 
Yeah, it is. It gets well, first yeah. of all, because I'm an Android guy, but <laughs> as well, <laughs> I never really got the concept of it. You know what I mean? Just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, what are you doing? That's FaceTime. You know what I mean? I didn't really get that. I was like, I was like, I Do might as well. Message them, be like, let's FaceTime. I just normally like call straight away. And that's what people do, but see, uh, I, th- I feel like yeah, it's just different, different for each yeah. person. I, I just like would rather just hang out and do something fun. Mm. I'm mm. A more like we bond over something, you know what I mean? Like we could be going out just for dinner, but then yeah. we'll spontaneously go to the park or something, right? Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, have some karaoke. And I think I did like find that you know a big part of like who I am is that physical touch aspect and mm. quality time with them instead of just like doing online stuff yeah but yeah that was for me at least i did i did like kind of find myself in a place where i was like dang like people did really like affect how my mood is so like if people would like message me because it's like we're isolating at that time so mm. people message me i'll feel good if they didn't i wouldn't you know what i mean mm. but i think as it went through i kind of realized that that doesn't really matter because like, after if it's like because I was waiting for them to engage, but I'm you could the one needing to engage. That, yeah, 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 pretty much. But yeah, that's why I got out of it at least. That's getting really deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great though. That's great that you guys come to this, you know, realization. Yeah, yeah, I, d- yeah. I didn't actually realize that I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it looks like we're on Ria's podcast now. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Welcome to Ria's podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's what awesome. Did, I mean, throwing yeah. the question back at you. Yeah, what, what about yourself? Um, I, I was sort of similar with um you that like I feel like I always run away from conflict because um. Like, I can always find work in Bali, especially. So, you know, like, when I'm pretty s- burnt out in here, like, I mm. just message one of my friends. She's pretty good at spontaneous thing. Be like, did you want to go to Bali for the weekend? Wow. So, it's just like... Yeah. But it's Bali is quite, like, doable for us. Then, like, yeah, 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 really yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then I felt like I never really confronted a lot of, like, issues in here. Like, even just, like, small things, like work dramas yeah. and things like that. But then because we had no escape during the pandemic, yeah, yeah. then, mm. yeah, it sort of have just reevaluated that for me. And I'm just like, mm. you know what? I can't really yeah, for just sure. escape all the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Dang. So, um, you mentioned earlier about backpacking. Yeah. Tell us about that, because I that intrigues me a little yeah. bit, because I'm just like, oh, like, it sounds cool. It mm-hmm. sounds scary. But it's, yeah, it yeah. sounds scary. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you, like, in the, in the 90s, 80s, uh, the, or the 1980s, Have 1970s, you guys seen the Serp? The, is it the Serpent? Or s- oh. Something like that. The Serpent, the serpent on Tell Netflix. Oh, no. Oh, you should watch it. It's about What's backpacking. It's about backpacking. It's about this guy that he, like, preys on, like, the backpackers. Is that's like the, the thing. thing. That's is this, like, yeah. 1960s? Oh, my God. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, the hippie. Um, yeah, yeah, the hippie times. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, and that's the feel. Mm. But, like, yeah, how did you push yourself? Because it takes a, a amount of, um, not just independence, but bravery to go out there and put yourself yeah. like, yeah. okay, I'm going to go out here. You know, like just backpack, you know, mm. like totally. So how do you, you know, get yourself into that? Yeah. So I think um, I've always sort of had the travel bug, even when I was like younger, like even just going to like the farthest like field to play, you know, like things yeah. like that. And then I think my first ever travel was um, that my mom allowed me to solo was flying to Singapore. But my auntie was working there. So mm. like my auntie would meet me and then. Um, we would like spend some time together, but then um, so on some days she would be working, so I'd just be by myself, like going around thing, the city. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I actually do like this, and it's actually not as scary as I thought it would mm. be, because I, you know, it's can it can be pretty daunting when you go to like a place, especially if they don't speak your language mm-hmm. or if you know, like you don't really know like how to get to one place or another. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I feel like even here when I was younger in high school, like I would Google, you know, like how to get to carousel before i even like yeah. get on the yeah. bus you yeah, know like yeah, yeah. but so be. but it, it kind of applies as well like you know before you get down the airport you already google like how to get to your like hotel from this place mm. and yeah it was pretty scary in the beginning and i think it didn't really like i don't know about you guys but in asia like i think it's easier to like stay in like nicer places mm, yeah. so you know yeah, like yeah. You'd, I would just book a hotel and it was quite lonely because it would just be me. Yeah. Um, but when I had to go to um, Europe, I, I don't know what it is. Like, to be honest, I felt like, uh, from what I remember, I think I was dreaming. <laughs> and then I thought, I woke up and I was like, oh, I dreamt that I booked a flight to, um, to Amsterdam. And mm, I woke up and I actually have like a confirmation, booking confirmation. Oh my confirmation. Gosh, what? what? 
<laughs> so I actually it. booked my ticket to Europe. What? So from Amsterdam, I'm just like, fuck it. I'll just have to figure it out. Like, mm. I just have yeah, to like just yeah. go there and then see yeah. where I'm mm. going to next. Yeah. yeah. Um, luckily, Europe, the ticket from one country to another is like, 10 euros, oh, wow. 15 euros. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, if yeah. it's like pretty close, mm. um, sometimes it could be like 50 to 60, but it's mm. still like relatively yeah, cheap than yeah. us like flying to a different state. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So or what? even to Broome, which <laughs> is like the <laughs> yeah, same yeah, yeah, state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what was your first backpacking? The Amsterdam, oh, the Amsterdam? Europe one yeah, was Europe. my first yeah, tell one. tell us about Amsterdam. Yeah, How's so that? Amsterdam was amazing. Um, it was definitely like a culture shock because um, like... I guess, you know, like you think, oh, you know, like they speak English. It's a European country. It's probably similar to Australia. Yeah. But they're also quite different in a lot of ways. You know, they have all these rituals in the morning where they bike to the shops. Like it's a huge biking culture, yeah. which is also quite something that is, you know, like admirable. Yeah. Um, but also like I feel like every 10 minutes I feel like I was going to get hit by a bike. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just everywhere Stampedes. um yeah, and yeah. then i stayed at this hostel um i can't even remember the name now but um i arrived like really late at night and i couldn't even find this place Ooh. and there was this um there was this um what do you call this there was this uh, it was like late my phone was dying mm, yep. and i had to take the train from the airport to this place but then from that place i have to take the bus to go to my hostel yeah so a lot of the places um or a lot of the airports in europe they already have like a train connected to go to the main city yeah and it's only perth honestly like it's <laughs> only us that yeah, doesn't have uh, yeah for yeah. sure yeah like yeah. even in singapore yeah, you know like korea japan yeah, like yeah, we have as one, soon yeah. as you go down the airport there's a train that goes to the yeah um and amsterdam you know like smoking um weed is legal I, I mean, is it true what they say about the the drug culture there? Like, it's like shrooms are like just being sold in cafes and stuff, or like, is um, that still like? Yeah, it's. Oh, I'm not. A, I'm not sure about mushrooms. I've never really encountered oh, okay, it, but okay, definitely okay. like. Sweet. You can smell it as soon as you, right, like, you go that, out of the train. That bush when you. Uh, walk and then yeah. um, I was. I think I was quite young. I must be like, just an eighteen, mm. or like just after I got my camera, and um, I was basically in this bus stop waiting and there was this like hooded figure that i can tell is smoking weed oh you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah he was like but i was lost and i didn't really have any other choice Option, but i have yeah. to ask him oh. to like you know like where is this etc yeah. etc so i was just like you know what what the fuck well, might as well like <laughs> like it. if i'm gonna die either way i might as well die like knowing i did something about yeah. it <laughs> um so i just walked up to him and then i asked him um yeah like you know like um hey i'm sorry like do you know where is this etc etc or like what um i know what number i'm supposed to take for the yeah, bus yeah, but yeah. i didn't know like when to get down yeah. um so basically he was just saying oh it's after the street and then um i was just like okay thank you and then i just pretty much kind of have left him yeah, like yeah. you know he just we didn't mm, speak after that yeah. and then when we got on the tr train he oh when we got on the bus he got on the same bus mm. okay and then um before my stop like he walked up to me and he's just like oh just remember you're getting down here and mm. i was like whoa that's like you know like it's one thing to answer my question, but to kind of remind Follow me up, that, yeah, yeah wow. I was like, that's amazing. Like, I didn't wow. expect that kind of kindness. Yeah, so I was true. like, whoa, that was like, you know, like I'm, I'm quite lost. I'm pretty cold, but yeah. this is like something that I, um, like I really appreciate. And then um, when I got down, like I still had to walk quite a fair bit, but then I, it was really dark and yeah, like I didn't have any like map or anything, yeah, which yeah. is why you should all print out a map if you want to go <laughs> yeah. backpacking. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I found this really old lady and she was, sweep this must be like 8.30 at night. Mm. She was sweeping the front of her house and she was like, she could not speak any English. Uh, yeah. And then I asked her and then I just showed her, um, my map mm -hmm. and she walked me to my, like, to exact the street location. where my wow. hostel is. And I think I could have gone there in, like, five minutes, but it yeah. took 15 minutes because she had to walk with me and she was like, oh, wow. like, so very slow. slow. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, like, you don't have to walk me. Like, it's okay. But she was just like, I don't know if she just couldn't understand yeah. me, or, but she was just like walking. And mm. I was just like, whoa, like the kindness of these people are already like Dang. so amazing. And like, you would like, never know that unless you Oh, like, ask. totally, totally. Yeah. You know, like I, I could have just been like wandering around the whole place in For two sure. hours and I probably yeah. would have 
found it, yeah. but I wouldn't be like, you know, like I wouldn't have interacted this kind exactly. of kindness. Yeah. So That's it was amazing. Dope. And I guess from there, like it was nice. I met quite a lot of people. Um, There was, there were two Italian guys in the kind of like, cause I, I wasn't really sure what a hostel is before. Like I thought you just, okay, you just book room. And I d- wasn't aware that there's like, yeah, like some are like co-ed and you sleep with other guys in the room yeah, or really? like in bunk beds or oh. some would just be old girls. It's like a camp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is quite exciting. Yeah. And then when I arrived, everyone was either already sleeping or out partying because yeah. it was like at night. Mm. Um, And there were two Italian guys and I think it was like um 10 p.m. and they were like, do you smoke weed? And I was like, no. <laughs> and they were like, Okay, and and they were like, we're just gonna smoke weed outside if you change your mind. And I was like, um, cool. <laughs> 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 but I was like, you know, like I was Awful eighteen. Was I've that? never been exposed yeah. to this kind of things before, and I was just like, cool. But you know, like I was just like, I appreciate their friendliness. Yeah, you know? like, it's scary for me, but I still appreciate their yeah. friendliness. Wow. And then yeah. I've met uh, Pauline. Um, she was this amazing girl from Germany, and basically she studies elephants' feet. Whoa! Whoa! Wow. So she goes That's to zoos <laughs> around Europe for her thesis and then she studies elephants' feet and how they react to sort of like what environment they're walking on. Yeah. And I guess um, she talks about their health in rela- re- re- relation to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. After that, I guess I was just hooked. I was like, there's so many interesting people to meet. Yeah. There's so many like adventures to go through, you know, like so many kindness that you mm. would never expect. That's true. And crazy. yeah, wow. from there, like I went to Copenhagen, I guess met a friend that was studying there. Mm. Um, and yeah, pretty much I just kind of like, I, I just got addicted. That's Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, Amsterdam. Yeah. That sounds like a great place. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Well, how I got kind of like introduced to that kind of thing is like, I don't know on YouTube, there's this guy that just takes photos of himself as he's like, he did a backpacking through China. And nice. he's got awards from it and everything. I appreciate he gets to search it up. And it's like, yeah, so his like, face is always turning like dirty and then he shaves and everything. It's, so it's amazing. It's pretty dope. Like how they, he like, I appreciate he just walked the whole way. Just like yeah. going through towns and everything. That's but amazing. But I found that like wow. really scary, especially going through like even Asia because he doesn't speak their language at all. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's just like, but yeah, but like yeah. you said, you, you find kindness. Like, yeah randomly and oh yeah i feel like there is a sense that they do like they do want to help you it's not like they have like intent to harm you or anything no if anything you're just another person in their town totally yeah it's crazy hey because like i mean i wouldn't say that perth is like mean or anything like we've got nice people in perth Mm. but then like you wouldn't have someone hop on the bus with you and say hey you're gonna get off this stop yeah yeah you know what i mean like yeah, definitely. I noticed that um, in a lot of like smaller communities, a lot more people are a bit more, I guess, approachable. Yep. yep. I guess because in the city, there's all these like notion of you know like being a fast paced environment. Mm. Everyone's rushing to do the to go to their work, not really caring about who they share the cab with, or, yep. or not really share the cab in here, but like yeah. share the bus with. Yeah. Um, which is I think quite sad because I feel like if we just take the time to talk to each other, then we'll find like quite a lot mm. of stories, like mm. interesting stories. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that kind of links because like I met this guy in Tave as well, and he's like from a rural area. I think he's from. Bunbury mm. and like he was just like kind of explaining like yeah like moving to Perth is totally different and like the people here are different and he went on to talk about like the different girls he meets you know what I mean he's like yeah city girls are crazy eh? <laughs> like legit like he was just so surprised how like we we're so scared to like in the city as well just to like like talk to strangers and get to know them because mm. I feel like we just overthink it we just think that yeah. oh, we're gonna see them again and everything before like for this guy it was just so normal like in a rural area, small area where you don't see a lot of people, mm. just like just to get to know them and like be a community where he is already, yeah. Which is like crazy. I don't know. It's like such a polar opposite, and he doesn't even live that far away. Yeah, it's just totally, like, totally. Mm, so different for him to like live that way. Yeah, right. And like, man, I wish I had like grew up like that, where I'm just so open just to like meet other people. And I feel like half of his followers, because he was like, oh, let me grab his socials, mates. And then, <laughs> yeah. And I saw, like, half of his <laughs> socials. Which is, like, from meeting random people. Yeah, it's literally from meeting <laughs> random people. And I wouldn't be surprised. Like, he was going to TAFE for a long time as well. 
And he like he probably has friends in his class, but he just still just comes down. And he's like, "Hey, could I sit with you and everything?" Which is like cool, man. crazy. It's I reckon respect. he's a backpacking type as well. Yeah, yeah. So, like, but it makes me wonder, like when we s- when we are scared to do that, like mm. in person, you know, like yeah. when we're in the city, when we're scared to approach people, are we actually in fear of us being in harm, or we're just afraid of what they're gonna think of us? Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. I feel like it is like just rejection, even. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. We all dream of like being that YouTuber that goes and interviews everyone. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. The step is really just to just be okay with rejection. Out. Yeah. Because yeah. like all those videos there. are edited for the highlights. Yeah. Like let's be real. There are a lot of like rejections where like for sure. Don't talk to me, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think like being okay with rejection is like the first step. Mm. And like as long as you had the intent to like just meet people and everything, that yeah. I feel like people will feel that genuine. As long as you don't look dodgy, you know yeah. what I mean? If you got like a balaclava yeah, on and yeah, everything. Yeah. Oh, you walk around <laughs> looking angry all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Still with you to eat, man? Like, <laughs> oh. Or like ask questions at a random like time of the night, you know? Like yeah, super yeah, late yeah, at yeah, night. Yeah. 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 But now, yeah. Oh, that, that's hell relevant to me because I've been trying to um, break out of that actually like mm-hmm. going to the gym just complimenting people mm-hmm. yeah. because anyone can take a compliment yeah, right? like yeah. no one's gonna be like nah go away you know like but even then I can't even go up to this guy and be like oh hey man like love your tattoos you know I can't even do that yeah you know so like I'm trying to find opportunities where I can like just, just push myself say something and just mm-hmm. say like dude I like your tats like would you get it done or like hey man you look nice rig <laughs> you know so mm-hmm. it's like it's I can't even do that yet but mm-hmm. yeah it's just trying to fight this internal battle in my head so Mm. they say that as soon as you overthink you've already lost yeah so you just have to to do it yeah i think it just helps also being like in like kind of i guess like environment where that's encouraged networking events Mm -hmm. also um i guess i'm plugging them too much but my climbing gym you know like (laughs) because usually like there's like different levels so from v0 is like a easiest climb to like the v10 which is a hard climb and um, some people can climb climbs that you can't climb, yeah. which is pretty normal. Yeah. And it's simple as just like approaching, be like, hey man, like how, where did you put your foot after that move? And they would literally talk to you or like show you the mm. moves. Yeah. And then it eventually escalates to, oh, how often do you climb? Or be like, oh, mm. I'm going to be here Tuesday if you're climbing on Tuesday night, you yeah, know? Yeah. And you just, it's, uh, it's just easier to make friends. Right. But I find that um, when I'd go to the gym, even though that's also like, okay, it's a little bit hard because everyone is kind of just in their zone so yeah. you instead of like you climbing the same wall, which is a little bit, I guess, more of a different, you yeah. know, like there's, there's yeah. that interaction yeah. that you always kind of like. Yeah. So yeah. did you find that pretty easy? Just to like meet strangers or just like, yeah, like. I think yes, because I'm just generally talkative. Like I always like find things to ask people. Yeah. And then I'm usually the type of person that, you know, like even in like, the most like I'd be to the girls be like oh my god your eyebrows are so nice <laughs> and they're like oh thank you <laughs> And but this is for me coming from I've always been in the hospitality industry when I was doing the photography part time yeah. and I feel like everyone would always come up to you to complain for a coffee if mm-hmm. it's not too hot mm-hmm. but no one really mm-hmm. comes and says oh your coffee is really nice mm, you know true. when it's nice they just don't say anything yeah. that's true and from there I was like why is it that it's so easy for us to complain but like complimenting seems like such a hard job for sure mm. so from then on i try to make it a point that yeah, you know like that. when we see people we have to yep yeah after you work yeah. definitely yeah like, you feel for the workers as well for that's sure. like when i see my parents like hello like i don't know not, not complain but kind of like make a big deal out of something i'm just like you know calm down <laughs> <laughs> like this guy's going through a lot but yeah i did find yeah, that yeah. i was a bit nicer to workers yeah. I feel more comfortable. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Definitely feel more comfortable yeah, in, like, complimenting work. Like, mm. Yeah. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, It's yeah. a bit busy today and everything, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel that. So, yeah. it's like... <laughs> that reminded me of, like, questions with, like, Uber driver, but it's, like, literally the same questions. Have you, have you had a busy day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you much. just start your shift? <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. They're probably like, oh, my God, the same question again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like, uh, it's, it's easier as you grow up, I guess. Like, I feel like it's not something you just, like wake up and just like yeah yeah it's totally. gonna be easy yep yeah. I just, i'm just gonna compliment everyone i'm gonna meet like five different people yeah I feel like you gotta be built different for that well I, i'm i'm a huge b- believer that you can always train your brain mm-hmm. so you can start with just you know like if you're always on social media just make it to a point to do three comments a week mm. just complimenting your friend if they start a business be like hey congratulations yeah, right. just things like that and then kind of try apply in person yeah mm. you know like if you do like get a coffee be like oh thank you that's such a fast service you know like simple mm. things like that mm. yeah so okay, true. okay and then eventually yeah. i guess it just kind of 
feels natural and yeah. just yeah. falls into. Oh, yeah. solid. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that's that's great. Like, that's speaking to me right now. Right now. I'm <laughs> feeling that. <laughs> oh. Get inspired, my I'm guy. so inspired right now. I can't <laughs> get my words together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like Your tattoo looks good, by the way. I heard it in the <laughs> previous podcast. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, she's, she's doing it right now. Right now. I'm, I'm yeah, overfilling yeah. you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it is some good yeah. inking. Where did you get it done? Uh, Bloodlines. Um, there's this guy called Aaron Murphy. Shout out Aaron Murphy. He, mm. He's done all three of these ones here. All pretty big. I can see there seems like to be like a theme in there. Yeah, so it's all like, uh, like they call it neo traditional. Yeah. Yeah, that's the theme. Uh, I guess there's, there's not really much meaning in my <laughs> tattoos, honestly. I just like the way. Actually, that's a lie. Uh, like these these ones, they do have meaning if you ask for it. Mm. But like, yeah, this is like sentimental for like a group of people in my life. I know it doesn't look like it. Um, Hey, it's so it's subjective, you know. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, I mean, from the outside, I look like a very intimidating person when you look yeah. at my tattoos. I mean, like a crocodile, you know, like they got hard skin, you know, they're like it's protective. It's like mm. armor. I like that. So, like, you know, I was like, you know, I like anything protective. This is a food dog, so it's like, you know, like a guardian. Nice. And I like that because my my ACL, my my left knee is gone, right? So. Oh really? So in a sense, it's on this knee to protect it. But I also just like the idea of it being a guardian, right? So nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. some good. This is this is the thing with tattoos. Like I find that I do have a little couple of little ones on mm. myself. Yeah. And I find that everyone always asks, like, "Oh, what does that mean? Like, does mm. it mean something yep. deep?" And I was like, "But sometimes the meaning is sort of like where you're at in life, you know? For I, sure. It's kind of like a scar, like a battle scar. That, yeah, oh, I got yeah, this because yeah. I was going through this time yeah. in my life." And mm. this reminded me of, you know, like being a guardian or something yeah, like right. that. Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then, yeah, it just looks cool. <laughs> yeah, it does look cool. Thank you. So Would you get <laughs> some on your other leg? Or? Uh, I was thinking about keeping one clean and one like, one, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I was thinking get like a whole sleeve on done. On the other, on the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's expensive. It's a, it's a very expensive oh, hobby. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. so we'll see in the future and see how I go. Yeah. But yeah, and you like... Maybe you can. It's time for you to ask if anyone wants to like sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were talking she to knows the segment. <laughs> she does it better than us. Yeah, she, well, you we need were, podcast. Yeah, we were talking to Ria about this earlier. She was giving us a lot of like advice on marketing and stuff like that, which is really great. And we, we yeah, we were just talking about sponsors. Hey, like mm. so, Yogas guys. Like, <laughs> if anyone from Yogas is watching this. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's my Holding first it time, right actually. Now. It's her first time she likes it. Alright, we'll have a sip. Yeah, yeah, give well, us a, a quick uh, review uh, before yeah, we yeah, end yeah, and yeah. everything. Mm. So we got we got uh, the the mango mochi. Is it straw? No, straw, straw mango, mango mochi. mochi. Yeah. Oh, did we get yeah. the same one? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's actually I like the consistency of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not too like thick that it's sickening. It's right. just like yeah. it's good. Yeah, mm. for sure. And this is the um the the purple rice the the basic. But you know it's a classic. The classic Purple one. rice. Yeah, so yeah. it's like rice in it. Like, oh, it's pretty interesting. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but besides that, you know, anyone that wants to sponsor us, like Ria said, like go ahead, you know, like, <laughs> you know, slide into our DMs. Yeah. We'll be more happy to take you on. Like, so <laughs> open to networking. So yeah, we'll yeah. Pr we'll promote you guys. We'll do anything really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I find that in the last, um, I guess in the last couple of years, like a lot of people are more, um into like relatable things yeah. like i know yeah, before facts. it's all about the superficial you know like looks mm. etc mm -hmm. etc but now like there's a lot of like mom vloggers you know that they oh, can yeah. kind of that's relate to yeah, that's yeah really so i before. think this is really yeah, good yeah, for yeah. you guys because you know we, you, we literally just like talk about normal things yeah, it's not sure. and you don't have to interview like you Huge know like people. The, yeah exactly exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. and it's it's more relatable because we all you know like we're just, we're just, all life. just yeah, yeah we're all just yeah. trying to make it yeah yeah yeah, any like advice or last words you want to say to anyone? Questions, even yeah, if you want questions. more questions, we can keep talking. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like I would always have a lot of questions. I mean, I'm happy to answer some, honestly. Okay, so what's your biggest goal for your podcast this year? Wow, that's a good one. Uh, I want to hear from you, Ethan. I want to get sponsored. Or like, uh, I just want to be in a place where we can just be able to get. Just people would like to respond, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, okay, that's yeah. not sad, but like, I just want yeah. to be able to like wake up, ask a question on Instagram, and just be able to come to a podcast and just answer you anyone's questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and be able to yeah. have that that bridge where like people have a problem and we can talk about mm, it. Yeah. Instead yeah, of yeah. us that's trying great. to like make it up and think like, oh, people are going through a hard time now. Let's talk about it and see if it happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're like shooting into like the dark. Yeah. But I just yeah. wanna. 
Yeah, if just like anyone to be able to just come out and be like, hey, like, what do you think about, you know, this in this part of the world? Uh, we'll just talk about it. We, n- we might know the answers, but we're already open to discussing yeah, it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And obviously just making it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh no, totally. That sounded yeah. like a good thing because I feel like you guys are giving voices to people that aren't, you know, like huge influencers or huge um, social media people. But like by... Y- by you guys putting it out there and just like encouraging everyone to participate, then yeah. you're literally like mm. a platform that yeah. gives voices to those people. Yeah. So that's amazing. Like, yeah. By the by the way, thank you for oh. participating. Yeah. Uh, My pleasure. One of, one of the <laughs> few people that actually respond to our stories. So <laughs> yeah. We see you. Guys you guys ask pretty interesting <laughs> questions. <laughs> they do, guys. Charles' <laughs> ego is huge. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's definitely like something. I feel like a lot of people, you know, like they're just like, oh, this is interesting, but then they just kind of scroll. And I was like, yeah. why? That can make up for a good conversation, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's what I've been struggling with uh, personally, just trying to find out what I can ask people and w- like if it can generate any some uh, like form of conversation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it basically, like what Ethan said, I feel the same for myself. Like I just want to have more interaction with mm. with our audience and like you know, uh, I saw this quote today. It's like, um, you you always see a hundred views before you get to to a hundred like a hundred likes because, um, you know, not everyone that's watching you supporting you kind of thing. So yeah. I mean, that's a bit different, but. But I want like to have like a nice yeah like nice interaction like like you know you, you like some good up, engagement yeah, good yeah. engagement like a community, a good we're, community we're not yeah. out there just for the followers we 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 do want to com- totally like, communicate with people and talk to them and like mm. have a nice community you know mm. so um, yeah. that that's that's the thing and like yeah like uh, is get more content out like do different things um, see see our page grow things mm. like that is like what I want to see this year so mm. yeah I think. I think I have a good feeling about this yeah, year. Yeah, I have a good feeling about this year. Exciting things yeah. are happening, guys. <laughs> but, so. but we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Yeah. But I think, uh, yeah, I think really appreciate you having on the show. Mm. Oh, thanks for having I, me, well, guys. I don't think that I know that. I also feel like, well, I think that my, my um, camera game will improve <laughs> uh, once I get that PDF. <laughs> <laughs> you should have like a before and after. Like. <laughs> I should. Interview me as well. Yeah. How has changed my life? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely have you back on. Yeah. I really oh, enjoyed thank you this. Guys. Thank I you. Hope yeah. you enjoyed this as well. Yeah, I just wa- yeah. I just want to say one more thing. Like our podcast, right? Mm. We, there's two things that we want to achieve: adding value mm-hmm. to our audience and. Oh, I forgot the second thing. I don't know. I, I spoke about this with someone the other day. <laughs> Oh, it, it just slipped my mind. But adding value is the most important thing. Yeah. And I, I believe that truly today having you on the show has you've definitely added value, not just Thanks, us, guys. but That's people are saying. I just yeah. feel like I had to say that. Oh, <laughs> thank you, did you, that. Thank you. you did that compliment. I'm having a heart moment right now. So I feel Aww. like I had to say that. <laughs> it's getting wholesome in but, <laughs> but this is why we do this. And I think I'm yeah, really happy that you came on and like yeah, yeah that shared your experiences with us. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, really appreciate it. And we look forward to like I guess working with you even oh, like, yeah, in the near future. That sounds exciting. Mm. Uh, like whatever project. I mean, we'll be down like hundred yeah, percent. But so yeah, definitely have you back on. Yeah, Thanks so sure. much, guys. I yeah. really appreciate it. It's yeah. definitely interesting to just kind of like you know, like I've never been in a podcast before, and yeah. I guess we've always like talked about things with friends, but never really in a recorded thing. And I thought mm. it would change something. I thought mm. I'd be like a little bit more like scared or yeah, hold back a little that, bit. Yeah, but yeah. it's good. Thanks for making me super comfortable. For yeah. sure. For and sure. thanks for my drinks, oh, yogas. Ab- absolutely. Oh, by the way, absolutely. she got us a cake as well. Just <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go get it. I'll go yeah, get it. I'll go get it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she I'm got Asian, us, I have to always bring she, food. She got us a Woolworths cake, you know. Yeah, it's um <laughs> fresh cream. It's not. It's a fresh cake, guys. Like <laughs> fresh cream sponge flaked yeah. almond. <laughs> almond. But yeah, I really appreciate yeah. you getting on. And what no we, worries, what we no say worries. here is uh, yeah. stay fresh. Can we just stay, yeah, stay fresh? Stay fresh. Stay fresh, guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, stay fresh, y'all. Stay fresh. <laughs> oh wait, wait, hold on. We gotta dap it up for the camera. Like a what? You know what a dap up is? No. I'll show you. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Because we're homies now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stay, Stay fresh. fresh Stay See fresh, you. guys. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>